the end of the year is finally upon us. Um, 2017 is finally coming to a close. 2018 is literally right around the corner. 2017 being easily the worst year of my life. Um, was matched with a lot of great films. I think film fans are gonna look back at this year and we're gonna sit down and really think that this was one of the best years in films that we've had in a long, long time. This year was so great, I was contemplating making a top 20 list of the year because there's so many great movies that legit did not make my list this year. And as a disclaimer, this is my list, it's not your list. These are my top 10 favorite movies of this year. All right, I'm gonna start off with some honorable mentions. My honorable mentions are Wind River, Shape of Water, Molly's Game, Body, Annabelle Creation, Good Time, Thor Ragnarok, Darkest Hour, Star Wars The Last Jedi. If anybody has a problem with this one, uh, we can throw hands. Uh, Power Rangers, Coco, Lego Batman, It, Baby Driver. And my last honorable mention I need to talk about because it was about this close to knocking out my number 10. But number 10 is there because it needs to be there. My last honorable mention will have to be The Florida Project. And if I'm being really transparent, I cry at the end of this movie like uh, two tears. Not just one, not that one that creeped. No, it was, it was two because this movie really hits you where it needs to hit you but it just edges out out of my top 10 list. So to start off my list at number 10, I have Get Out. I think Get Out was easily the biggest surprise of this year. Jordan Peele does an amazing job with this movie, directing it and writing and producing it. Daniel Kaluuya is gonna be somebody we really, really look forward to. I think his performance is very, very underrated in the award circuit right now. You feel every emotion he's going through throughout this whole wild adventure. This movie is also a wonderful blend of horror, drama, and comedy. The social commentary in this movie is also very clever and very relevant to today. The metaphors it has in this movie is very thought provoking. Honestly, I cannot wait for what Jordan Peele does next. Speaking of horror movies, at number 9, I have Mother. Darren Aronofsky is back with another mind bending classic, in my opinion. The biblical allegory this story tells is very intriguing. It shows a great parallel of what the world is today and it asks a lot of questions about Christianity and human nature. I believe if it didn't have a misleading marketing campaign, this would have been met to a lot more acclaim. To move over to, you know, more brighter movies, at number eight, I have Spider-Man. Duh. I was actually just watching it right there. It's actually what, like right there. That's what, that's what's point. Tom Holland is my Spider-Man. Uh, Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield, they're cool. But Tom Holland is my Spider-Man. As someone who grew up with the Spider-Man comics and Spider-Man 90s show, you know the This was always a Spider-Man movie that I wanted. This movie was funny as hell. It just seems that Marvel cannot do any wrong. It seems that Michael Keaton can't do any wrong as he has this amazing performance as the Vulture. To stick over with funny movies, at number 7 I have The Disaster Artist. James Franco's film about the best to worst movie ever made. What easily could have been a sketch comedy over exaggeration turned out to be a grounded story about the personality Tommy Wiseau. Great laughs, great cameos, and just overall a great film. Moving on to number six, I have War for the Planet of the Apes. In an age where trilogies can't even make a good movie past the first sequel, this movie skyrockets itself into one of the best trilogies of all time. It wasn't the big explosion war that we may have wanted, but what we got was a character piece of the character Caesar and the internal conflict that he has with dealing with the humans. I really hope Matt Reed continues this story into it circling back into the original 60s Planet of the Apes movies. All right, now we're in the big boys. We are in my top five. At number five, I have Dunkirk. Go Nolan is back again with another spectacle, this time his take on a war film. As Americans, we hear about the big wars in World War II like Normandy, but growing up in England, their biggest war to them is Dunkirk. You can tell how special this movie was to him with how tenderly he treats the situation. What easily could have been, you know, the typical gory, centered on a small team, turned out to be a very tense story about survival. Obviously, you know, Chris Nolan cannot just tell a straightforward movie. He plays with time in this movie. He shows the evacuation of Dunkirk through different perspectives of the war. There are the soldiers on the beach. That time frame was taking over a week. We have the people coming from England to Dunkirk, and that was taking over a day. And then we have the dogfighters in the air and that was taking over an hour. The way Nolan tells these stories and he eventually interweaves all three of them in about a two minute interval is just masterful 
filmmaking. The score by Hans Zimmer and Dunkirk also puts you on the edge and it makes you tense in your seat. And I think after you watch the movie The Darkest Hour, you really appreciate this movie a lot more. And while Chris Nolan is my favorite director, there is one person right now who is really on this coattails. Which brings us to my number four movie, Blade Runner 2049. Blade Runner 2049 was directed by Denis Villeneuve. I personally think the original Blade Runner in 1982 is just an okay movie, but with a very, very great, intriguing premise. This movie basically takes that mythology and brings it into this movie to expand the mythology and to bring up different perspectives and different questions. Ryan Gosling and Harrison Ford is amazing in this movie. Robin Wright is great in a little performance that she has. Jared Leto is really, really great in this movie. And for a three hour movie, I was glued to the screen for every second. But it also being three hours also reduces the replay value because that's a big commitment. Which brings us to why my number three movie beats out Blade Runner and my number three movie is I, Tanya. This movie couldn't have been any more entertaining. This movie felt like it was written for Scorsese and it even feels like Scorsese himself directed this. I think this movie easily puts Margot Robbie up there in the A-list actresses right now. Sebastian Stan brings a great performance, Anson Janney brings a great performance, Paul Walter Hauser brings a very interesting performance, great comedy, amazing dramatic moments, and just a great two hour ride. At number two we have a movie that hit on every single cylinder, it was the most anticipated movies for most people, and it met our expectations plus some. So at number two we have Logan. I think we can all agree that Logan was the Wolverine movie that we all deserve. Blood, language, and just rated R movies are really only meant for two characters, and that's Deadpool and the Wolverine. I think this movie had best in career performances for Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart. I genuinely think they both deserve Oscar nominations for their performances. And if it wasn't for that stupid, stupid exposition scene on a freaking phone, nicely edited, good audio transitions. This movie would have been perfect and probably would have been number one. And my number one movie, the movie I'm going to crown as my favorite movie of this year, will be Call Me By Your Name. I actually had to watch this movie again to make sure that I wasn't high and this was actually my favorite movie of the year. I watched it again this past week and it's true, this is my favorite movie of the year. A movie that was just a genuine love story, didn't care about sexual orientation, it just cared about the romance at hand. Timothy Chalamet, Army Hammer, Michael Stuhlbart bring some of the best performances of this year, hands down. And I really don't want to sound pretentious, but the reason why a movie like this will rank as my number one is because it just reminds me as to why I love film. Growing up on big action movies and just anime movies as a kid, these movies basically remind me as to what film really is. Engrossing you in a world that you're not in, but it makes you feel like you've lived in there your whole life. And this movie made me feel that the most. All right, and that is my top 10 list of the year. I'm sorry this came out so late. I can even show you Apple calling me to apologize that my software didn't come yet. What's happening right now is that our software licensing team is a little bit behind, uh, you know, um, due to the holiday season. Um, there was you guys let me know your favorite movies of the year I know there's gonna be differences between yours and mine so you guys let me know this upcoming week when my software finally decides to come I will upload my most anticipated movies of 2018 list so please like this video if you liked it subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and comment all the your favorite movies from this year all right I'll see you guys later